Hey everybody, welcome to lesson number one on functions. Now, before we went off on spring break, we had just finished our unit on relations. And uh, when we were looking at relations, we considered six different ways that we could describe those relationships. And so we looked at words, mapping, so arrow diagrams, function, notation is what we're gonna be looking at in this unit. Um, but last unit, we also looked at tables of values, the equation, ordered pairs, but also a graph. So in a relation, uh, just a little bit of a review, but we have a domain and a range. So the domain is our input values, usually our x values, and uh, that's related to the elements of our range, which are our output values, and in most cases, our y values. Um, what we're gonna be looking at now are a different type of relations, and those are called functions. Uh, we're gonna illustrate the concept of a function by looking at these two different relationships relations and um, they're going to be described in words so one and two here on on our domain we have the values 1 4 9 16 and our range we have the values 1 2 3 and 4 first of all let's look at this relation as our values of our domain multiples of our range so here's our domain and here is our range so you could think of these as as x values, and you can think of these as y values. Now, we want to think of them as a multiple of, so our domains as multiple of the values of our range. So first of all, 1 is a multiple of 1. That's the only one it'll work for. 4, however, is a multiple of 1 and of 2, but also of 4. So this is our arrow diagram. And um, if we move on to 9, we have 9, which is a multiple of 1. It's a multiple of 3. And that's the only ones that that will work for. But we have 16, which is a multiple of 1. It's a multiple of 2. And it's also a multiple of 4. So these values can multiply to give these values here. Now, if we... We've moved on from the line di diagram. We're going to look at the set of ordered pairs here now. So if I look at the set of ordered pairs, I'm taking the ordered pairs from the, uh, the line diagram up here. So we had 1 and 1. We have 4 and 1. But we also have 4 and 2. We have 4 and 4. And moving on from 4, we have 9 and 1. We had 9 and 3. And then we had all these other uh, values of, of 16. So we had 16 and 1. We had 16 and 2. And our other multiple, we had 16 and 4. And last, we have the, uh, we can plot these as ordered pairs as well. And so uh, it's easiest just to take our ordered pairs from this list that we just compiled and put them down here on the grid. So um, we have one and one, put it right there. We have four and one, we had four and two, we have four and four, and then we had nine and one, and we had nine and three, and then all of our 16s, 16 and one, 16 and two, and 16 and four. So that's the first, the first sets um, of our fun. That's the first function we were looking at. Now the second function, or actually I should say relation that we're going to be looking at is the square of. So uh, when I have the square of these numbers, so if I have one squared, that's going to be one. Uh, two squared would be four. Uh, three squared would be nine, like this, and 16. Or four squared gives me 16. And uh, we're going to actually identify which one of these is a function um, in a little bit. But notice how we have multiple values that work for a lot of these, um, these integers given here. However, on, on this side, we only have one value for each of my inputs. So one output for each input. Now we're going to complete our set of order pairs here. This one will be a, a quite a short list. So we have one and one. We have 4 and 2, 9 and 3, 
and 16 and 4. All right, so I just take in my ordered pairs from my, my line diagram, my arrow diagram up here. And now we're going to plot these ordered pairs on my grid below. So I have 1 and 1, I have 4 and 2, I have 9 and 3, and I have 16 and 4. So notice the difference in these, in these, uh, these grids here. And so this one almost looks like a bar graph or something like that, whereas this one looks like a linear expression going straight up. Um, if we continue with perfect squares or values that uh, we, we would expect to see on here again, we could maybe see 5 would correspond to 25, 6, and 36, and then we would keep moving up, um, almost linear. So what is a function exactly? Well, a function is a special type of relation. And it's a special type of relation in which each element of the domain, so every like x value, is related to exactly one element of the range. So every x value is related to only one y value. So if any element of the domain is related to more than one element of the range, then the relation is not a function. So what that means is if you have any x value that is related to more than one y value, then it's not going to be a function. So for example, let's say I had x is equal to 4. And then, um, so let's say this is 4 on my graph. But let's say this corresponds to a y value of, of 2, but also of negative 2. So let's say I had... Um, this point of 4 that correspond to 2 and negative 2. That means that this is not a function, all right, because there's two y values that have the same x value. And uh, that means that we have one element of the domain that corresponds to more than one element of the range. Now, in the exploration on the previous page, one of the relations is a function and the other one is not. Explain how we can determine which relation is a function by looking at the following. So first of all, the arrow diagram, the ordered pair, and the graph. So let's quickly go back to that page. All right, now we want to examine these a little bit closer. So remember, for every value of a domain, it has to correspond to only one value of our range. So first of all, we can see pretty clearly that there's only one value that corresponds to my values of my range. And if we look at this, it's the same thing, right? I don't see any crossover with my, my x values having multiple y values. So right away, we know that this one over here is a function, right? So this is good. However, if we look at this one on this side, if we look at the line, the line graph, so one and one, that's fine. But then we look at um, all my other values, and four had this four has one, two, three y values. The sixteen has three y values, and my nine has two y values. So right away we know this is not a function, not a function. Well, I can't spell. Not a function. If we look at the ordered pairs, it's the same thing, right? Like I have four. 4, 4, and then there's multiple y values that correspond to that same x value. So, uh, the same goes with my 9s and my 16s. And then if we look at the grid, same thing. There's For all these domains, there's multiple values of range for, my, uh, for 4, 9, and 16. But if we look at the domain and range for the one that is a function, there's only one value in each, each domain and range. So for my arrow diagram, um, we can summarize that. If only, if only one arrow leaves every element of the domain, then it is a function. Then it is a function. Um, for the ordered pairs, we could say if each uh, x coordinate has only one corresponding y coordinate, then 
then it is a function. And for the graph, we could say uh, if each horizontal axis has only one point vertically, then it is a function. In class example number two, we have four different graphs. I have graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D. And I want to classify each of the following as true or false. Now let's, and I'm just going to uh, say true or false in this, uh, in this table val or in this table down here. So A, B, C, and D. Now, first of all, for each input value, there's only one output. So for each X value here, there's only one input. So negative three, that's true. There's only one value here. It doesn't go down on this side. And if I were to look at all the other values along A, that's also true. So there's only one output. So for every X value here, there's only one Y value. Um, for B, however, it's the same thing. So yep, yeah, that's also true. But for C, that's not the case, right? If I look at, let's just look at, um, at one here. So if I look at, and where's, where's, okay, this is at five, and oh, here's, here's my zero axis, uh, my, my origin. So at, at one, at negative one, if I go up, it's up at two, and it has another y value of eight. So no, right away, we know that's false. Um, for D, it's the same thing. If I look at my value of x at five, that corresponds to a value of over two and at negative two. So again, that is false. Now for each output value, there's only one input. Um, that's not quite true, right? For each output value, there's only one input. So for example, when y is equal to ne uh, positive five, that's equal to um, like negative 2.2 .2 and positive 2.2. So uh, this is false. Um, true for B, right? It, there's only, for every output, there's only one input. So for every Y value, there's only one X value. And for graph C, this is false. For each output, there's only one input. Well, for example, when Y is, um, let's say, when Y is at uh, eight. So when Y, is at eight, and actually in this case it's, it's true, but when let's say y is equal to six, I have a value here and here, so that's false. And for d, uh, this is true. For every output, there is only one input. So at um, y is equal to eight over here, it's gonna only correspond to one x value. And the relation is a function. A is true, since this is true up here. B is also true, since this is true. This is the one that's important, right? This is not really important for it being a function. And so C, they're all false, so that's false. And for D, this first one was false, which means it is not a function. From graph C, we want to write two ordered pairs which show that the relation is not a function. And we want to draw a line joining these points. Um, so from graph C, let's see, I have negative one up here and uh, negative one down here. And negative one and eight and negative one and uh, two. So there's my line. Uh, so I got I had negative one and positive eight and negative one and positive three. Uh, from graph D, write two ordered pairs which show that the relation is not a function. And same thing, we want to draw a line uh, joining these points. Um, we can choose uh, four and positive two and four and negative two. And here's another line 
and that'll join those points there. So four and two, and four and negative two. So on graphs A and B, we drew a series of vertical lines, or sorry, we draw a series of vertical lines. We wanna do that in the first two graphs now, and we wanna find out if any of these lines are gonna intersect at more than one point. So here we had, we drew straight lines, and we they did intersect here and here. But if we were to draw any straight line here, so like, bam, like that, or like, like this, notice how it only crosses my graph at one point. And the same goes with this side over here. It's only crossing at, at the one point here and the one point here as well. And so this is what is known as the vertical line test, and that's what we're gonna look at next. So the vertical line test can be used on the graph of a relation to determine whether or not it is a function. So with the uh, vertical line test, all you gotta do is draw, is draw a line on the domain of the relation, and if it intersects only once, then it is a function. However, just like we looked at with graph C and D, if your vertical line intersects more than once, then it is not a function. So with class example three, we're gonna determine whether or not these graphs are or are not functions. So first of all, we have a set of ordered pairs. We, I have five and eight, six and seven, negative five and three, two and three, six and eight. Um, this one is not a function. So I'm gonna say no. And the reason it's not a function is because it has two outputs. So it's got, uh, for, for six, it has six and seven, but it also has six and eight. So, um, that would mean that at my point of six, we would have it intersecting a line twice. Um, with this one here, three and three, two and three, four and five, negative three and two, the answer for this one is yes. Um, and because for every X value or value on my domain, there is only one Y value. Now, even though we look at this one and this one, three and three and two and three, the Y is repeated, and that's totally fine. Uh, for C, yes, this is a function. And because every value of my domain is only mapped to one value of my range. And it's even though these ones map to the same value, it's okay because we don't have B mapping to multiple to P and Q. Um, if we look at D, well, this one fails the vertical line test. And so this is not a function. Now E, the relation connecting the provinces and territories of Canada with their capital cities. Yes, that would be a function because for every province, there's only one, um, there's only one uh, um, capital city. And for F, this one is a function so I say yes, and the reason this is a function is because if I draw a straight line anywhere, at no point am I gonna cross this vertical line uh, at two points. However, this one, well, check this out, bam, there's two points that it crosses, whoa, three points it crosses, so this one is not a function, no. Now, I'd encourage you guys to read, to read this, um, it is quite wordy, and so it can be a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain what's going on here. Um, so I have a function from a set D, which is the domain. So it goes to a set R and the range, and this is a relation in which an element of D is related to exactly one element of R. And so this is what we've been seeing the whole time. So every X is only mapped or only relates to one Y value. So if the function f does map an element, so if it's a function, we would, can refer to it as f. If it maps an element of x in the domain to only one element of y in the range, we would write f uh, colon x to y. So x, to, you could say x to y. And we wanna complete this for the function, um, the square of on the very first page. And uh, the one it's referring to is this one here this one here, and so one, we go arrow one, four, arrow two, nine, arrow three, 16, arrow four. 
So I'm going to take this and I'll record it in a different notation on that last example. So one to one, four went to two, nine maps to three, and then the last one was 16 and that mapped to four. All right, in this last example, we're using the notation that we were given up above. So I have f, or so function, of x. So this is my input, uh, maps to 3x plus 1. So this is the value of my range, my y. And so we are now going to uh, input our x value into, um, my, my dome, into my range here. And so what this looks like, I'm just going to uh, do the work in this column here. So if I'm inputting negative one into my value of x here, then, so x, I'm gonna write it like this, into three x plus one. So negative one is getting inputted in like this. So negative one would have an output, so three times negative one, is negative three plus one would be negative two. So negative one would map to negative two. If I have zero, and so with the same thing, so x to three x plus one, but this time my x value is zero getting mapped in, so three times zero plus one, zero would have an output of positive one. One, and same thing with the next with my next output, and so this time we're told to, to input one, and so again x to three x plus one, and one is getting inputted to three x plus one, so three times one plus one, three times one is three plus one is four, and one to four, and the last one we have here is our uh, two that we're gonna be inputting. And I'm just, I'm gonna skip doing the work here, but three times two is six plus one would be seven. So two would map to seven. Now we wanna list the elements of the range of our function. And so the ones I just wrote down here, these are my elements of my range. And so I'm gonna do it the same way using these squiggly brackets. We have negative two, positive one, positive four, and positive seven. Now we want to show this function as an arrow diagram. So as an arrow diagram, um, I'm just going to put them in terms of x and in terms of 3x plus 1. And so my elements of my domain were negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And the elements of my range were negative 2, 1, 4, and 7. If I complete the arrow diagram, then I'm just mapping it like this. If I were to express this as a set of ordered pairs, then I would say, well, negative 1, negative 2, 0 and 1, 1 and 4, and 2 and 7. And then on a Cartesian plane or Cartesian graph, um, I'd go negative, negative 1 and negative 2 would be somewhere down here. 0 and 1, we then have 1 and 4, somewhere like that. And then 2 and 7, we put like that. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at function notation, which is something that's more commonly used than this.